Hi kids! Welcome again to Destiny Kids Church Online. My name is Teacher Diwa and I will be your teacher for today. Before we go to our praise and worship, I would like to introduce our church first. I'm from Destiny Church. Can you say that with me kids? Say Destiny! We call ourselves Destiny because of this amazing word that God said in Jeremiah 29.11. Let's read together, kids. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Isn't that an amazing word, kids? That simply means that God has a plan for each one of us. God has a plan for you, for me, and for our, for our family. And that plans are always okay, approved, and the best. Can we say that together, kids? God's plan for my life is always okay, approved, and the best. So now, we will go to our praise and worship. Kids, today we have a new worship song. The title is Faithful. Can you say Faithful? That's great. I hope you enjoy our new worship song, kids. So now, let's all stand up, stretch our muscles, and let's get ready to worship the Lord. Enjoy! The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. Of the spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. You want to be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. You want to be a watermelon? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit is not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit is not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit is not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit is not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. You want to be a grape. You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness. Self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Your word 
Did you enjoy our praise and worship, kids? I hope you did. So now, we will go to our lesson. But before we do that, let's pray first. Let's all close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's pray. Repeat after me. Lord, thank you for today. Lord, we pray that you would ready our hearts as we hear your word. Lord, teach us about faithfulness, how you are faithful to us, and how can we be faithful to you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So, for this week, kids, we will continue our series on the fruit of the Spirit. And so far, we have learned about six fruits of the Spirit. Can you tell me what we have learned so far about the fruit of the Spirit? What are the six things? Can you tell me? Okay. If you said we have learned love, joy, peace patience, kindness, and goodness, you are correct. So last week, we learned about goodness. And I hope and I pray, kids, that as we go from last week, we remembered God's, God's goodness in our lives. That He has been good to us, and because of that goodness, we were able to show our goodness with others. Okay? So now, we will go to our lesson. Our lesson for today, kids, is the seventh fruit of the Spirit. Can you guess what the seventh fruit of the Spirit is? It starts with letter F. Okay, if you said faithfulness, you are correct again. Today, we will learn about faithfulness. Can you say that with me, kids? Say faithfulness. Faithfulness means being trustworthy dependable, and loyal. And maybe some of you are still wondering, Teacher, how can I show my faithfulness? We can show our faithfulness by being faithful in the things that we say. For example, when we promise something, we do it. Like when we promise, Mommy, Daddy, I will fix my toys. Then when we say that, we will do it. Or when we say to our parents, Mom, Dad, I will obey you. And we do it. That's how we show our faithfulness. We, we, we do what we say. We, when we promise something, we do it. That's faithfulness. And uh, now, for us to understand more about faithfulness, we will take a look at the life of a person in the Bible. The name of that person is Daniel. His story can be found in the book of Daniel and for this lesson we will take a look at Daniel chapter 6 or Daniel in the lion's den. So now kids, you can ask someone from your house to read you the story and after hearing the story, you can play this video again. Okay? Enjoy kids! This Daniel lived in a land ruled by a new king named Darius. Daniel was friends with King Darius. But there were other men who were jealous of Daniel's friendship with the king. These men came up with a plan to get rid of Daniel. We beg your majesty to issue an order that for a whole month, no one shall pray to any other god except you. And if anyone does, we will throw them into the lion's pit. The king agreed to issue the order. But one man would disobey this order, Daniel. Now, Daniel admired Darius, but he also knew that Darius was just a man. So, as a faithful Jew, 
he continued to face west towards Jerusalem and pray to our God as he always had. Your Jewish friend, Daniel, is defying you, Your Majesty. He has ignored your order and still prays to his God. Arrest Daniel. Darius stayed awake all night, worried about his friend. Darius was certain that his friend had been eaten by the lions. But when he looked inside the pit... Daniel, has your god rescued you? Long live, your majesty. I never did any wrong to you. My God stopped the lions from eating me. Darius had Daniel's accusers arrested. And then he took back his order and allowed people to pray to our God. So that's the story of Daniel. Did you enjoy that, kids? I hope that you did. And for us to understand more, about faithfulness from the life of Daniel, let's answer these questions. First, why was Daniel put in the lion's den? Daniel was put in the lion's den because he refused to pray to other gods. He refused to pray to King Darius. Isn't that right, kids? Daniel threw showed his faithfulness to God by refusing praying to other gods, by being faithful to God and only praying to Him. Second question, how was Daniel saved from the lion's den? Okay, Daniel was saved from the lion's den because of God. God saved him. God showed faithfulness to Daniel by saving him from the lion's den. From these things, kids, we can learn two things. First thing is that we can be faithful. Can you say that with me, kids? Say, we can be faithful. You and I can be faithful. That when we say things, we can do it. That if we promise something to the people around us we do it or if people around us ask us something to do and we say yes we were we are able to do it and kids we cannot only show our faithfulness by the things we do around the house we can also show our faithfulness to God like what Daniel did he refused to pray to other gods and kids like Daniel we can do that as well we can show our faithfulness to God by always praying by reading our Bible, Bibles and following His commands to us. The second thing is that we must always remember that God is faithful. Can I say that kids? God is faithful. God is always faithful in our lives. He always provides for us, He always protects us, and He is always there for us. And because of that, if we always remember that God is faithful in our lives, we can be faithful as well. So now, kids, we will go to our memory verse. Our verse for this week is Psalm 117, verse 2. Let's read together, kids. Psalm 117, verse 2. 
for His unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord! So for us to better remember our memory verse, let's do it with actions. Repeat after me, kids. Psalm 117 verse 2 For His unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord! Let's do it again, kids. Psalm 117 verse 2 For His unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord! Can you... Can you do it, kids? Have you already memorized? Can you show me? Great. If you already memorize, memorize it, kids, you did a good job. But if not, keep on practicing before we go to our artwork. Okay? So now, kids, we will go to our artwork. For our artwork, we will do this, the Faithfulness Necklace. We will do this for us to be reminded of this verse in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So when we do this, kids, we can wear it for us to be reminded of God's faithfulness in our lives and that so we'll, we will always remember also that we can be faithful as well. So we can do this kids by cutting strips of paper and rolling them and putting glue on them. And after doing that, we can put a string on the holes in between so that we can make a necklace. You can ask kids, your parents or someone older to help you with our artwork. And kids, you know, we, we, we don't have to finish this artwork today. We can do this artwork for the week because this artwork will take a long time to do. Okay, kids? And before we say goodbye, let's close in prayer first. Let's pray. Close our, let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's pray. Say, Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you, Lord, for always being faithful to us lord we pray that as we remember your faithfulness in our lives that we will be faithful as well lord we continue to pray for the frontliners we pray that you would always protect them and Lord, we pray for the sick that you would heal them. Lord, we ask that a cure will be found for COVID-19. Lord, we pray that you would continue to protect and provide for our families. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that's our lesson for today, kids. I hope you enjoyed it and see you again next week. Goodbye.